Look at that. I really poked my eye out. It's really weird how the universe works, but I mean, I've actually come here to talk about point clouds. And that's pointing at the clouds, which is really weird. Synchronicity. Yeah, have you ever heard of a point cloud? It's uh, pretty relevant to uh, what I'm going to be talking about today, so it's quite important that you understand what it is. So I'm going to demonstrate using these funny guys. Have you ever seen these before? It's the weird dinosaurs in uh, Crystal Palace. So uh, it's very windy today. I hope it's not screwing up the audio. So presuming that worked, you should be able to see what's called a point cloud, like a, a sort of vague, low definition Im impression of what is there in reality. And that's the sort of thing that actually the 5G network will make much better quality. And uh, let's go over to the icon of uh, communications to discuss it more. You can hear the wind like ripping through it. So um, I remember watching a, a sort of presentation, sort of like a scientific presentation ages ago about how mobile phone masts could actually be used theoretically to spot stealth aircraft. The reason being is that like a, a stealth aircraft essentially is um, it, non-reflective, which means normal radar essentially would try and send a signal to it or towards it and it would bounce off and come back and that's how you would see it. But a stealth aircraft bounces all the signal away and absorbs it, meaning that you couldn't actually uh, see it on radar. But the, uh, the principle was that if you've got two telecommunications masts at some distance and they're communicating with each other, if something passes in between them, it essentially creates a shadow. And that shadow, of course, in the background of everything else being mildly reflective, uh, if there's something specifically absorbing that, you can use it to image the thing that normally would be invisible. It's similar to how um, they detect extrasolar planets, so like planets around other solar systems. If um, you can detect, obviously with a telescope, a star, and if a planet moves in the way or, or in between you and the star, um, if you know how, how uh, bright the star should be, you can then mathematically work out by how much the star dims when something moves in front of it, um, essentially the the general shape and size and mass of the object that you can't really see but uh, by using mathematics like algorithms and stuff you can essentially work out exactly what is there and actually a lot of information about what that thing is that was essentially disrupting the signal or getting between you and the signal and that sort of got me thinking about 5g it's what really interests me about it is its use by the surveillance services. Because the thing about 5G, or rather what they say is the pitfall, or one of the pitfalls of 5G, is that it is easily absorbed by everything, which means it doesn't, it doesn't pass through stuff like ordinary radio signals might. Um, so they, they have to have, or they're going to have to have, you know, a mast every 100 meters or whatever to make sure that everybody can get coverage covered in electromagnetics but that that piqued my interest because of course if it uh, if specifically anything moving between say your mobile phone and the nearest mobile phone mast if that is absorbing the signal and there's disruption in the signal or a dimming in the signal that the uh, mast receives that can actually be used to create a point cloud and therefore image in a uh, anything that is there and if they're going to be every 100 meters everywhere we go that means the surveillance services will have the ability to essentially construct 
um, a 3D representation of what is there in real life, uh, essentially on a live basis, but also forensically. So say something happened, although of course <laughs> we know that all the CCTV cameras generally when something happens accidentally don't work. So don't expect uh, transparency on this, but it just means forensically they can look back at the record of all of the electromagnetic happenings, the dimming, the little blips that happen in the graphs when something moves in between uh, two broadcasting and receiving uh, objects. And uh, yeah, forensically, they can look back and basically reconstruct a three-dimensional live, almost like video footage, even if there's no CCTV camera there. Which I think is particularly interesting and most probably is one of the most enticing things for the powers that be to make sure that the 5G network happens. And unfortunately, this is the way that it goes, is that they're not so much going to be using the masts, but it's the interaction between the mast and your phone. So your phone is going to be now not just a thing that follows you about and tells them where you're going and all that kind of stuff. It's going to be used against other people. So people's phones will essentially be spying now, not on them, but also on everyone else or helping them to create a, a very high definition image of everything around it. I suppose my point in this video really is that there's not really much we can do in stopping the creation of a 5G network. What will essentially be sort of the crowning glory of the creation of a all-seeing digital god. But uh, there is something we can do, isn't there? Seeing as they're constructing something that will actually require not only the network itself, but all of the individual devices playing their part to make it function properly, I can only say that for the benefit of humanity, please put your phone on airplane mode.